Away from politics, we now focus attention on the fishing industry. Out of the country's annual fish production of 412,657.62 metric tons, aquaculture contributes just 10,200 metric tons, representing 3% of the total production, with annual demand standing at 960,000 metric tons. The nation's fish deficit is estimated at 547,000 342.38 metric tons. As GTV's Na Amele van der Poy reports, if attention is paid to this sector, it can help bridge the gap, especially at a time of dwindling catches in the marine sector. The apparent FAO definition of aquaculture is the farming of aquatic organisms, including fish, mollusks, crustaceans, and aquatic plants. Fish farming implies some sort of intervention in the rearing process to enhance production, such as regular stocking, feeding and protection from predators. In Ghana, the Nile tilapia, scientifically known as Orochromis niloticus, is the most cultured tilapia species, constituting about 80% of aquaculture production in the country. The remaining 20% is made up of catfish and others. Cages, concrete tanks and earthen ponds are common systems used in aquaculture production. Commercial initiatives in aquaculture production in recent times have provided an increase in production and employment opportunities to a large number of people in the country. The sector has the potential for boosting the economy. Though marine and inland caption production is greater than aquaculture production, aquaculture seems to be increasing year after year, while marine production decreases. Marine fisheries, I would say we are not making any headway as at now. There is this overexploitation and therefore overfishing and therefore dwindling of fish stocks. If you look at our marine statistics from 2005 to 2010, you could see that the production is steadily coming down. Interestingly, number of vessels are rather going up, but the production is coming down meaning that it's not the number of vessels that will increase our production. And therefore, in other words, we say, we say the catch per unit effort is also coming down. Currently, fish is imported to supplement local production. In 2009, an estimated 182,400 metric tons of fish was imported, but in 2010, it rose to 199,798 metric tons to make up for the shortfall. But even with the importation, the country is unable to meet its demand. Experts say one sure way of bridging this gap is through aquaculture, which Ghana is turning to. In 2005, fish production from cage culture, earthen ponds and concrete tanks was estimated at 1,154 and rose to 1,668 metric tons in 2006. By 2009, it had increased to 7,203.42 metric tons. Currently, aquaculture production has hit 10,200 metric tons. That shows you that now the production is picking up. But those of us in the industry still think that we are just at the inception phase of commercial aquaculture. With 126 cages and 182 ponds constructed so far, mostly through private initiative, aquaculture seems to be making great strides. His Grace Farms, located at Akwamufi in the eastern region, has 28 cages, with each containing about 12,000 pieces of Nile tilapia. They are able to produce an estimated 36.5 metric tons of the Nile species annually, with a staff strength of only 10. Fish farmers engaged in the culture of the Nile tilapia through the use of the cage say their yield is greater than those from the wild or the free range. In cage culture, you have control over the sizes. You give them the fish so they are able to raise to the sizes that you want before you harvest them. But in the uh, free range fishing, the farmer goes there, cast the net, and anything he picks, that is what you have for the day. When you put about 10,000 fingerlings in the cage, you are sure of getting 10,000 or more fish, unlike free range fishing. The greatest challenge facing cage culture production currently is the unavailability of feed since it is imported. 
unlike the pond, whose fish naturally feed on algae, insect larvae, and other decomposing organisms, cage culture requires that the fish be fed all the time. According to the Fisheries Commission, plants are food to produce feed locally. We have created the environment for any investor who wants to come into aquaculture feed production to do so. As I speak to you, I know of one company who has almost finished construction of their factory to produce the feed locally. The feeds are of two types. We have the one we call the floating feed and the sinking feed. The sinking feed mostly can be used in ponds, and that already people are producing them here locally. But when you want to do cage culture, especially in a water body like the water lake where the water flows, then you will require the floating feed. If not, when you put the sinking feed in, you time it just gets washed off. So you require the floating feed that will stay in the cage for the fish to feed on. And that is what is being imported because we haven't started production of the floating feed yet. However, I'm sure before the end of this year, that company, the factory will be operational so that we have the floating feed, the feed also being produced locally. And they will take advantage of the local raw materials that we have from our farmers to produce this here. One is almost complete in Pram Pram. We are hoping that when we start production of feed in the country, it will bring down the price of feed. And other businessmen to come out. Daco is to be revitalized by a company that has bought it. The Aquaculture Research Development Center of the CSIR genetically improves on the genes of the Nile tilapia yearly. Now in its eighth generation, the Nile tilapia is known as the Akonsombo strain. We picked some from Nauni in the northern region. Then we came to the Mando strain. They are good in terms of growth. And we picked a farm tilapia. So those were crossed. So the strengths of each found themselves in the strain that was developed. It grows faster at a rate of 3.2 grams within five months and are highly resistant to disease. Once they are given good quality feed and well managed, farmers are assured of producing a table sized fish of about 670 grams and above. Out of an estimated 412,657.62 metric tons of fish the country produces annually, aquaculture contributes only 10,200. At this level of production, within how many years will Ghana be able to bridge the gap between the demand and supply of fish? It will take a very long time, not less than 15 years. Yeah, the demand and supply is not going to be fixed. For now, we have it. it's all related to the population size. However, the aquaculture has lagged behind. But for now, that aquaculture is taking off commercially. The more we get people investing in, then the shorter it takes for us to break the gap. We hope that with the type of enthusiasm we've seen the private sector go into the cage culture, it is hoped that if they are able to do so, Within a shorter term, the, ministry, the commission, for instance, is forecasting, looking at the production that we are getting now, we are forecasting that within the next two years, we should be hitting about 35,000 tons. And for the next five years, we are aiming at 100,000 metric tons. With aquaculture offering more opportunities for the nation to meet its fish requirements, how does the government plan to fully exploit it? We are now also thinking of sea culture, aquaculture, kid culture in the sea. You know, now we are hearing that there is a breakthrough in the research where the um, uh, animals in, in captivity will be able to uh, mate and produce eggs and then we also use it to produce fingerlings. Let's hope that technology will move forward. Once technology will move forward, then we can also go into marine culture or we'll go into marine culture or kid culture in the, in the marine waters. It behooves on government and interest groups in the fishery sector to follow the plans laid out to ensure that the country becomes self-sufficient in fish production. Now, Meli Vanderpoi, GTV News, Accra.